obviously scale down your your your, your tier size, right? Scale down your 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 your, uh, uh, your ambition of how big your, your your trade potentially could be. Just go into cash flow mode, right? Go into cash flow mode. Make sure these ranges are confirming. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody survived today. Uh, pretty, pretty rough, ugly day in the equities market today. Now, when we recorded, when I recorded, I hate using the word we, when I recorded the weekend update, right, uh, we talked about the ramifications uh, of the spies closing below the 50-day moving average. We talked about also uh, the reality of the queues having one more day to really start getting, you know, potentially getting hit and going down to the 50-day moving average. And, you know, we were prepared. We had, a, you know, I had a pretty good uh, solid list today. Google I liked short, NVIDIA I liked short, and a whole bunch of other names, right? All the other tech names that I really, really liked. And when I woke up this morning, um, like you guys did, I saw the Dow down 500 points. I was like, well, <laughs> what the hell is the news? I mean, why is the Dow down 500 points? I, I get follow through to the downside. I got that, we were all prepared for that, but why 500 points? And I started looking through uh, the news and apparently one of China's largest, um, I guess commercial real estate, whatever the case may be, um, was really at the point of fears of default. Now. When I first saw the you know when I first saw the Dow futures down 500 points, I was like, "Is this really enough for the futures to be really overreacting of a 500 point move?" And then it clicked on me. Okay, the world is still still recovering. If you really think about it, despite the stock market doing incredibly well, if you guys remember, the mortgage crisis is only what 12 years old, right? And nobody and people, when they still hear the word default or possible default, that's a very, very ugly word. Uh, if anybody who traded during, you know, during uh, uh, the, you know, the, the mortgage crisis, this is a word you heard all the time. Uh, default, 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 whether it's homeowners de uh, defaulting, whether it's insurance companies, uh, reinsurance companies defaulting, mortgage lenders defaulting, right? Toxic, toxic, toxic. And today was a perfect example of how Wall Street sometimes, when you look at the news at, uh, at first, and you're like, wait a minute, what, what's the, you know, why is this such a big deal? And you realize people still have scars going back to 2007, 2008. Remember, people lost their jobs, people lost their homes, people, uh, it, you know, it looked like the brink of extinction, right, of, uh, of our economic kind of global uh, landscape. Yeah, we could talk about it and maybe laugh about it years later, but it was real. People lost their homes, their jobs, their livelihoods. And when you start hearing the word default, it really starts bringing back a lot of bad memories. And again, here's the first person, you know, here's a perfect example, shoot first, ask questions later, and everything got sold. Literally everything got sold. Uh, nothing got, um, you know, nothing was uh, held back. They sold equities, right? Uh, they sold crypto, and crypto got sold, right? So you look at crypto all across the board, 5%, 10%, 20%, all across the board, uh, equities got hit. And if you look back at the weekly chart on the queues, and this is kind of pretty aggressive here. Uh, when you look back at the weekly chart on the queues and you turn around and say, well, what's wrong? There's nothing really wrong. Look at the monster uptrend uh, that it's in. And you're absolutely right, right? If you're, if you're a longer term investor and kind of a, a longer term outlook for your capital, there's nothing really, really wrong. But when you start breaking it down from, you know, on a daily chart, you'll notice that this was the first close on the 50 day moving average below, right? The first close below on the 50 day moving average all the way back since uh, January of 2021, right? So you're talking about a good sample size. Uh, we held it nine times, literally nine times uh, on the way up, right? You could see all the areas of where uh, the futures held, right? Q's held, you know, the hair, you know, so, but more important, this is the first time, first close 
uh, below the you know the 50-day moving average. And now the question is, what happens next, right? You could turn around and you know again, this is a cool thing on social media, and people turn around and say, well, um, you know, bears never learn. Buy the dip. You buy the dip. Right, buy the dip is only good if you're a longer term investor. If you're an investor uh, that you have a five to 10 year horizon, you really don't care about the day to day, the month to month. You're looking at a big picture, and again, a lot of fun value, value fund managers do that as well. But again, you also have to be conscious of what potentially could happen. And for all the people, you know, during you know 2007, 2008. Uh, that were you know caught in the spin cycle of what potentially could happen. The last thing you want to hear are headlines that are going to really remind people back then of what the market potentially go. Now again, by no means, guys, by absolutely no means, I want to repeat this again. By absolutely no means am I comparing uh, this one headline, right? This isolated one headline to what happened during the mortgage mess. But it starts somewhere, right? It starts somewhere. You heard back in 2007, 2000, well, late 2006, about all these predatory lenders, right? Nobody cared what a predatory lender was. All you cared about, your appreciation of stock price. You heard about all these companies, all these company, all financial instruments that nobody knew what they were, right? Credit default swaps, all, these, all this toxic paper that later was the demise of Bear Stearns, of Lehman Brothers, that basically forced Merrill Lynch to sell themselves to Bank of America just to kind of stay sovereign. Think about this, Merrill Lynch, the bull, right? Can't stand by itself. So you started hearing these little things about this. You know, you started hearing about the rise of student loans, right? Again, that's not anything new, but you heard the rise of new loans. And then you heard one day David Einhorn come around and say, hey, by the way, this is all a big problem. People are buying two, three properties with no proof of verified income. There's no proof of of earnings, they're just basically handed all these keys to all these homes and all these predatory lenders are making a killing of it. And nobody talked about it because everybody was making so much in that industry, but it started from somewhere. The difference between now and 2007, number one, everybody is deleveraged, right? You ever, you ever, anybody buy a house in the last 10 years, right? Anybody buy a house? What used to be a mortgage application that was this big, right? The mortgage application came, my, my, my newest house that I bought in 2016, I felt like I was, I was literally filling out the yellow pages. It was this big. You needed two, three years of income. You needed six to eight months of mortgage payments in your bank. You needed at least the 750, 770, whatever it was, a uh, uh, credit score, right? You needed at least 20, 20, 20 25% down. You, you, you're, you, you had to have God on your side to, uh, to get a lender. So again, I think we've come a long way since then, right? A long way since then. And I don't think it's the same thing. Again, uh, there, as far as we know, again, we have to trust, there's no toxic paper floating around. There are no um, creative loans being bunched up together. There's no predatory lenders that are giving people with no verified income, no money down loans. As far as I know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, right? But the point is we've come a long way. So it's very, very tough to turn around and say, what's happening in this isolated incident on this ever grade, whatever the hell it's called in China, to kind of what potentially could happen, it's apples to hand grenades, right? But again, at least we learn from the past. So if, if this thing has any legs, right? Because everything is a trickle down effect. Remember, it's dominoes. We can't just turn around and say, ah, it doesn't affect us. Now we're woke, right? Anybody who's been, been trading from 2006 to 2009, we're woke. We kind of know the signals. We kind of know the language. We kind of know what to look for. This time around, at least we know if things start to get louder and louder and sellers come in and headlines get more and more abrasive, at least I know who got hit first. At least we know where was the collateral damage. And back then, right, in 2007, 2008, guess who got hit, guys? It was the lenders. It was the, the mortgage brokers. It was the insurance companies. It was the reinsurance companies. It was the title holders. Again, does that play out? God forbid, right? The last thing we want to see is that type of environment again. But remember, we learn from our past. We don't want to repeat it. 
Okay, and nobody talking about we're gonna go back to and test 2007. Whoa, 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 easy, hold your horses. I just want to remind the newer traders that again, everything that you learn on your journey, you're storing in your mental Rolodex. So if you start seeing whispers or you start hearing language that you've heard before in your trading history, at least you know how to react, you know how to proceed and you understand how to make sure that your money is safe. And at the end of the day, it's all about leading with your shield and not with your chin. Isn't is this environment good? Of course not, right? Who the hell wants an eight, you know, 900 point decline, right? Who, who's, who's gonna turn around and say, you know what? I really like that short of Amazon down 170 on the day. I think I can make five bucks on it. Who the hell's gonna say that, right? Who's gonna turn around and say, you know what? I wanna start shorting Tesla down 37 points in the day with a half hour of the day. Again, there's no value there, okay? There's no value. So this type of environment is challenging because the volatility, especially on the overnight market, becomes, you know, becomes really, really aggressive. So for example, we were down 900 points when I logged off around quarter to three. And all I kept saying to myself, Lord, market guys, okay, if anybody's listening, please, please gap up the market tomorrow so everything can get stuffed into supply. We can go green to red. And if we take down today's channels, tomorrow will be an epic potential setup on the short side. Guess what? That didn't happen. I wake, I come back, I look at my screen, the Dow rallies back 300 points off the lows, and now what looked as a phenomenal day two potential for a possible destruction of equity prices, not that I want to, it's just kind of reality where we are, now everything's in the middle of the range. So if you look at Tesla, right? If you look at Tesla, you know, look at the rally on Tesla, from the bottom this thing rallied back 10 from the bottom look at netflix right look at netflix netflix rallied back six from the bottom look at nvidia right nvidia look at the rally nvidia N nvidia rallied six off the bottom so and this is kind of where we are right now so it's not that it's oh my god this market's so hard it's oh my god the market's so irrational that you need a perfect open right you need a perfect open and a perfect close to kind of implement your your a plus setup and the hardest part, the hardest part, especially for new traders, a lot of new traders are trading today like it's it's all it's it's Disney World, like it's a day at the beach, like you're, you're trading breakouts. Guys, there is no breakouts. Okay, anybody who's looking for breakouts with with <laughs> with technical damage, I don't know what market you're trading, but I would love to kind of kind of get what you're right. Allegedly, allegedly. Okay, it's a kid. It's a kid friendly show. Allegedly. So most important. Okay. Uh, every single day when you're trading a market like this, number one, again, when we say this in bull markets, let alone uh, in a scenario like this, number one, you don't need to trade every single day, okay? The point of trading is getting the biggest value for your buck, right? The absolute biggest b value for your buck with the safest possible scenario. So even if things don't go right, you're putting yourself at least in a position that you can have a paper cut instead of a separate head. If you're trading, all right, a market like this, like it was three weeks ago, that everything's rallying, people are chasing stocks up two, three hundred percent, you're gonna have a really, really aggressive reality check very, very fast. Okay, the stocks don't break out in a scenario like this. They don't break out in a market that is headline driven. Again, remember, nobody wants to hear the the, the word the default. And everybody, nobody wants to hear the ramifications of the word default. So keep that in the back of your mind. So going into tomorrow, again, I want to be very, very reactionary to what I'm seeing. Okay. If I was 25 year old Dan or 27 year old Dan, I would still have last night's erection. I would still be jumping at 931. I'm not that guy. I'm 47 years old. I'm doing this for a very, very long time. Now I'm very, very patient, okay? There is no FOMO, there is no I have to, I need to. It's all about let me wait and get the biggest bang, the biggest bang that I can. And, and here's kind of the whole point. If you don't have the market, right? If you don't have the setups that you're looking for and your research is backing, okay? Then you have to switch to plan B. Unfortunately for tomorrow, because of this 300 point move off the bottom on a, you know, in the indexes, Plan B tomorrow and plan C tomorrow is not going to be as, as, as sexy as plan A would have been, but we adjust, right? We adjust on the fly because that's what a professional is. And I don't care if you're trading for 20 minutes to 22 years. 
act like a professional make sure your money comes back okay make sure your money has friends to come back and if it doesn't there absolutely is no reason that you have to sacrifice brain cells or your hard-earned capital because you have to trade like a lunatic so depending how we open tomorrow okay we're gonna need a we're gonna need a plan b okay we're gonna need a plan c and we need a plan j but the most important part is let these channels develop develop organically and make sure that you are comfortable in what you're doing obviously scale down your your your, your tier size right scale down your your your, your um uh, your ambition of how big your, your your trade potentially could be. Just go into cash flow mode, right? Go into cash flow mode, make sure these ranges are confirming and make sure you're trading with complete eyes open instead of blinders on on a market that you think you had three weeks ago that you have in front of you uh, for tomorrow. So obviously, again, we have to see how the mar market opens up tomorrow and see what ranges are there. If you look at, uh, if you look at, at the indexes right now, you have the SPY's big, big gap down. Uh, reclaim this level, right? Reclaim this rising, um, what is it, 100, 100 day moving average. We have to see what happens tomorrow. Is it possible we have a dead cat bounce tomorrow? Absolutely, but I'm gonna need at least one candle to figure that out, right? I'm gonna need to see at least what happens the first time uh, after the futures get rejected. I'm gonna need to see at least the first time what happens if the futures go down. How do equity prices react to that? Is it possible we have a dead cat bounce tomorrow? Absolutely, just because we have, we've got such a big beat down today, but I would not be shocked if a lot of names do not go rally and give us a day to move. So uh, let's talk about some of the pivots today. Again, as you can imagine, not a lot, right? Not a lot because we just had this aggressive gap down. We were watching for the op we were watching for upside ranges. The first move was actually pretty good. I missed that Tesla first opening range move. I know a lot of you guys caught it. It was like for six, seven dollars very, very quickly. And then we kind of went into like hold and wait and see. And you kind of started seeing, you know, slowly but surely, stocks giving you moves, but not really, really big moves. Uh, Roku, if it builds below, can flush 314. Again, keep this in mind, Roku is already down 7, 11 points. Again, it took down that area, uh, got down to 309. It took like, literally all day to get there, but it got there, right? It absolutely got there. Uh, you look at a name, for example, like Netflix, uh, 575, big support, last week's lows, builds below, has some pretty good potential. Uh, Netflix, again, it took literally all day to get there, but you know, took out 75 and traded right to the 68 level uh, that we talked about. Again, if Roku confirms tomorrow, if Netflix confirms tomorrow, of course there's more downside. But again, they're so far off their lows, it's going to make it very, very tedious to kind of wait for their setups all day tomorrow. But again, what other choice do you have? Um, and again, here's my notes. You know, it's, sometimes it's very important to let things play out today. If we close weak, right, that's exactly my point, there will be a huge opportunity for more. This is five hours ago. Okay, now obviously the market had to rally back to kind of throw the, you know, kind of throw uh, the wrench in that, in that, uh, in that game plan. Uh, Tesla for experienced traders, uh, 730, 50s, demand is moving lower. Uh, if it gets rejected off that area, it could flush. So it hit that area, went a little higher, reclaimed, uh, went all the way down to 721. If you got some guys, good job uh, there as well. Uh, and again, I said, might see lows. It went all the way down to 721. Uh, here comes 568 on deck on Netflix. Um, Roku, you know, there's a buyer sitting there all day. They need to clean them up. They finally cleared them out, went down to 309. And that's about it. So again, look, is it tough? Absolutely. Is it tradable? It is, but you have to do your really, really good approach to really understanding that, again, you don't need to be in the spin cycle. If it's not a clear uh, and imminent area that you can take advantage of, there's absolutely no reason to kind of get out the way. Again, it's all about the long game. It's all about putting your position to be a trader for many, many years to come. If you're in this for one day, you're basically taking the Hail Mary approach on the first, you know, on the first drive of the game. And again, that never works out. Guys, again, it's not that crazy. It's not that hard, right? It's very difficult, but it's not that hard to be patient, be a professional, and be an adult. Guys, have a great night, everybody. Get some rest. We'll see what happens tomorrow, and God bless. I'll see you all there. Take care.